Hi everyone, welcome back. Jeff Manchester, Manchester Music. A bit of a return to form for the channel. We're going to be doing a Anatomy of a Cue, where I dissect a piece of music that I wrote. I show you what's happening on the effects bus. I show you what libraries I'm using. I show you the automation that I'm using. I talk about the choices I made, some choices I didn't make, why and why not, all that stuff. But without further ado, this is going to be um, the bit where I show you the song that we're going to be dissecting. It's called Silent Until Now, and it's just something I'm working on for this little secret project. Anyway, um, here it is. So there you have it. Um, if you saw some peaking on the meters, it's only because I find that I record and I do my arrangements and I do my compositions very quietly in Logic. And then um, when I bounce things out, it's just a, a super quiet mess. So I'm just upping the uh, volume on the sort of stereo uh, fader. And also I've got two limiters here uh, and Isotopes Insight just to let me know where I am LUFS wise and minus 13. Minus 14 LUFS is a pretty good range for me to be um, on a mix, although I probably should be closer to like minus 16 LUFS integrated. Anyway, let's start from the top here. Corin's Harps, that's the first track, and if I open contact, we'll see where they're coming from. They are coming from the um, Berlin series percussion, I believe. Or no, they're not. They're coming from, I think, Metropolis Arc. That's right, Metropolis Arc 2, and I believe I have the Qua, the Corin's Harps right there. And this is a tremolo patch. If I play a little bit of it, it's just me putting my finger down on E. And it's just this beautiful, delicate sort of pulsing. It almost sounds like rain falling on the roof of your car. So just for texture, I wanted to start with something like that. Here's what it sounds like, kind of soloed. And then we have the big sort of crescendo here. But this 
this is what opens the track more or less. I've got some drones down here, but I just feel like this makes for a really interesting like question mark over your head, like, ooh, what's that? It's almost like something kind of coming out of the ground and growing. Anyway, so yeah, that's uh, Metropolis Arc 2. And I've also got uh, on there an instance of Neutron. And this is just sort of dipping some of the lows and doing a pretty uh, aggressive high pass, allowing the highs to pass here with this uh, shelf here. It's a band shape 24 dBs, uh, 48 dBs rather. And I've got a little boost here at around 5K just to brighten things up. And if you want, I can play you the before and after of that on Neutron. So before, to me this is very sort of muddy. After. After, before, after. Don't get me wrong, I like the sort of stuffiness that this library has, but I feel like with the reverb and everything sort of cooked in to um, Metropolis Arc 2, it's a little bit, it's a little bit cakey. Let me get uh, Do Not Disturb off there. Um, it's a bit cakey and sort of it's a little it's a little much so I wanted to sort of brighten it up a little bit and also the reason that we high pass things the reason we take a shelf and we clear off all the low-end information or at least some of the low-end information is of course to make way for uh, low-end definition via other instruments like I've got um, you know some low strings and more low strings and bass clarinets and all those things really need their own space in the frequency spectrum I've used this analogy before it's like taking a photograph family photo if everyone is standing on the same level, you know, you can't really see everyone, so some people have to um, go down a little bit, the tall people should be, you know, shuffled to the back, and there we can see everyone in the, in the frame. The next thing I have are some piano chords. Again, these, I believe, come from uh, Metropolis Arc 2. It looks like I've got Neutron on there as well. Yeah, so Metropolis Arc 2 has some little hidden treasures, which I love. Um, and one of them is this piano section here, keys, and then you go to glomer pianos, I think, and then you can reach reach this 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 place a few different ways. These are the fifth chords, and the velocity is sort of um, well, the dynamic switch is velocity dependent. So if you're pressing something down hard, it'll sort of adjust its sort of compression and dynamic settings. If you do something soft. center, uh, that velocity sort of um, control. Too many of those, it gets kind of muddy, and maybe the temptation is to just sort of put all your fingers down. And that just sounds like a bit of a mess. So we space them out in this mix, and you can hear them sort of plodding along with the uh, Korn's harp. So have a listen. they are on their own. And of course, you can see this little potentiometer, potentiometer, you can see this fader moving a little bit. That's because I've got volume automation happening, I believe, on here. happening anyway there is definitely automation on the corns harp so you can see that I've gone down you know we start at um, a little over unity gain here at zero and then we go down depending on what's happening in the rest of the mix and of course automation is really important let's in fact let's go back up to corns harp so you can hear why I'm dipping it I'm doing it for like strategic regions here because other instruments come in and we don't need everything playing at a sort of similar loudness so we're gonna go for a dip here let's go back a little bit further unsolo it a little bit further so we catch the uh, sustain there we go so we're going to have a couple of little harp plucks come in hopefully they'll be tremoloing so now 
now we have some strings come in and the piano chords are sort of doing their thing. So it's going to have to get a little bit quieter. And then there's a kind of crescendo coming up where we bring the loudness of the harps back up here. You can see. back into perspective but it's important to dip things loudness wise just as you would tell your sort of your players to maybe play a little bit softer when other instruments come in in the arrangement itself in sort of the live room you know with the orchestra there um, just so that things don't get too meddy, meddy, messy and tangled and muddy um, let's move on here if I press A I can switch back to this other view and don't get confused here you'll see una corda and arc piano that's just me starting with one instrument it keeps that tag and then if i go to another instrument it's something else or actually it stays like this i haven't figured out how to change that uh, so for now just focus on what's happening on the left here and not what these individual sort of audio events are tagged as in logic um, the next thing here so we have tundra strings high and we can see the automation moving around here. And I believe this automation is, yeah, dynamic, strings main high. And we can get a better view of the, of the um, automation down here. Yeah, right there. So that's a bit, bit of a better perspective. Let me go into Spitfire. So I'm using the Flotando, Flotando CS Long. And I'm messing with my, I believe I'm messing with the dynamics. This thing right here, yeah, you'll see moving back and forth. We dip down, come back up. And hopefully the thing you're taking away from this is that you can use different libraries. You can use different sample libraries, different companies, and sort of blend things together in an elegant way. It doesn't all have to be Spitfire. It doesn't have to be everything that was recorded in one room. By that I mean Spitfire records everything. They seem to have taken up residence in Air Studios. And then you bring in a, a library like, um, I don't know, something from Native Instruments. Uh, and they record their stuff. I think some of their stuff is recorded in Budapest. Some of it is recorded in uh, Philadelphia, it's all over the place. We can find ways to make these things play together and get along and sound good. So hopefully you just uh, you don't feel like you have to stay with one horse the entire way. So all these guys are doing, these strings, these tundra high strings, they're just sort of adding a little bit of texture because we have a lot of plucked instruments, right? We've got the piano, which isn't plucked well it's kind of plucked and we have the harps which are also plucked and percussive so the strings just give a kind of balance to everything um, and I find it just gives a nice sort of smooth uh, sustained pad like feel to what's for now anyway a very plucky sort of quick attacky sort of feel and this just helps I think Next up is the Ricochet Strings, and this is also from Tundra. Oh, I should mention that I had a Pro-Q2 from FabFilter just doing a big sweeping um, high pass here just to get rid of all the gunk, any gunk that we had on the Tundra Strings High. In fact, if I bring this in, maybe we can see some of the stuff that it's getting rid of in the um, frequency sort of uh, spectrum here. <laughs> here and I just want to avoid it. Maybe stuff that can be more felt than heard, but still. Next up we have uh, the Ricochet Strings, and there's nothing happening effects-wise here. These libraries, a lot of them sound just beautiful on their own. And I'm using the this lovely Ricochet thing. Watch, I'll put my fingers down here.
I mean, I that articulation is gorgeous. I don't know where else you can find that. But anyway, if you're looking for something like that, I'd say this is a good starting place in uh, Tundra, which is the fifth iteration of Albion. And this helps to sort of deliver a new texture of strings into um, this, this arrangement. Right now, things are very plucky or they're very sustained with the Tundra strings high and the pads down here, which I haven't talked about but will. And the ricochet strings just give an indication that something big is about to happen because they're kind of wild, capricious, and just sort of, they're just always changing and evolving, very organic. Here's what it sounds like on its own, and then we'll do another in the mix. dynamics we have dynamics automation to keep things interesting right again this theme of things growing up from the ground they're kind of coming alive here the combination of that C and A is just gorgeous the way that those that um interval sounds I think um, so that's that and then next up we have the hero strings which are doing just that they're sort of providing a kind of authority here uh, and they come right at the end just to really uh, balance out and give some weight to what's happening this huge crescendo I'll solo it here where did I get you hero strings I got you from the Spitfire symphonic strings this is the long Articulation. We're using a deca tree, so it's pretty, um, pretty washed out and bird's eye as far as the microphones are concerned. This is very. Um, we hear a lot of the room, is what I'm trying to say, <laughs> and not saying very well. Here's uh, here it is soloed. Of, of, of automation there you can see right here I have um, if I just switch around here so 10 and 9 obviously that is going to be dynamics and vibrato I believe so dynamics and vibrato those kind of move around a little bit I do a little bit of automation just at the end to really uh, create a lot of chaos in that last moment you can see it here So things are moving, but not a whole lot. And these guys, to me, watch this. I'll take them out, and you'll miss them right away. It's hard sometimes to see what these strings and these instruments are contributing to a huge mix, but I find that once we get rid of them, if they're subtle enough, if you get rid of them, that's a thing. If you do something very subtle and very delicate, just to sort of add an element to a crescendo or a, a dramatic moment, if it's subtle enough, when you take it away, you'll miss it. If it's too loud, you'll want to cut it. It's very bizarre. So I find that if things are carefully placed in there, um, we miss them when they go away. But if they're way too obvious and too loud, and let's say I went all the way on my dynamics and my vibrato or something like that, or just turn this, uh, this fader up the whole way, I would be like, oh, it's too loud. I'm going to get rid of it. But when it's sneaked in there, I think it's really nice. So I'll get rid of it, and then I'll bring it back in, and maybe you'll miss it like I do. <laughs> Bring it back in here, unmute it. 
lovely. Now the low end. And this is where we have to be careful. Mixing low end is difficult. It is the bane of a lot of producers and composers having to deal with low end. So I like to keep it simple and use two sort of sets of instruments. One providing some airiness, if that makes any sense. Sort of a... Um, it's, I'm sort of, um, it's oxymoronic to be like, I'm looking for air in my low end, but you'll see what I mean, hopefully. I've got two sets of, of, of strings, and they're both doing the same thing. The MIDI is very similar. In fact, I think it's the same. But they're complementing each other, I think. First is strings low. automation that looks like some volume automation to me if I go in here yes yeah, so we have the sustains here and this is from uh, I believe this is also from Metropolis Arc 2 let me just double check if someone wants to tell me how I can press a button here and it just jumps over to what uh, where I got it from so I don't have to find that every time that would be super helpful in the comments if you want to leave that um, orchestra yeah so strings low here that's what, that's where we are. Aren't those beautiful? And these control the key switches for all the other articulations. And of course, we can get much deeper as some uh, very um, pro users of the capsule system know with orchestral tools. So that's adding the sort of girth to the low end and the cool strings low over here, which is next, and doing the same thing MIDI-wise. Where did I get you from? I believe I got you from Mass. Yeah, I did. And I'm on the low end here, and I'm doing automation as well with this, but this is just giving air. Cool is nice. I like the way that they describe this because it does have an icy feel to it. A sort of breathy feel. Have a listen to these guys. we're automating the dynamics and vibrato um, for people who don't know the dynamics on Spitfire libraries are usually always mapped to the mod wheel so you don't really need faders for that if I go down here I'm also using a new an instance of neutron why am I doing that I don't know I actually don't think it's doing anything <laughs> no idea why that's there but these guys I find just complement each other really well they're doing the exact same thing one's providing the low end the other's providing some lows and, and some airiness which just works for me <laughs> use headphones but you can kind of hear when it goes away when I'm uh, soloing and unsoloing the cool strings low. I'll bring it back and do some A and B's so you can hear. <laughs> subtle but I like it so that's what's happening there obviously automation as well this is interesting this brass hold thing that I did I got this from where did I get this from this is also happening in um, orchestral tools is uh, Berlin brass series I believe oh boy I better be right about that let's just double check maybe it's coming from Metropolis Arc 2 bass clarinets why would I say brass if it's clarinets what's wrong with me um, yeah, it's not. It's from Metropolis Art 2. Metropolis is all over this library, or this uh, composition. So what the function of this is really just to wipe the slate clean with the arrangement. It's sort of 
like taking a big eraser and just and say we're going to start over again and i've added altiverb here altiverb 7 i think i've got yeah this is the teldeck studio which is actually pretty appropriate because this is where orchestral tools records all their stuff in, in the teldeck studio in berlin so that's just giving usually re reverb on on um, low-end instruments is kind of undesired but i thought it was fitting here so watch what it's doing i mean we have this arrangement here at the beginning Things are plodding along. And then this guy comes in to just reset the whole composition. So that's really all that's doing. That's just a, it's, it's a, it's a piece that connects one element of the composition to another. And that's the easiest way that I could do it without doing a very kind of I find tired thing where all the instruments suddenly go down or something like that. I feel like that's all over the place. So I wanted to find another way, a more interesting way to me, to make sure that we build a bridge between the first and second part. That's all that is. And so that's also got some volume automation on there just to sort of, it's again with the bridge metaphor, it just goes up and then it comes down. Some rising and then falling action here. I'll play it soloed. <laughs> So now, Woods High. This is another choice that I that I made. Um, we have this big crescendo at the end, right, where all these things are kind of coming together and exploding. And it would make sense to have horns in there. In fact, that's usually my instinct is to have a horn rise rise out of everything and sort of take over because um, they're they really call your attention to them as an instrument. I find they're very arresting. I wanted to go a different route. I wanted the horn sound, but I wanted to do it with wood woodwinds. And so I went again for one of my favorite libraries here, Albion 5, and I'm using this hollow patch, uh, or patch, this is a articulation from the Albion 5 series. And um, I've got to find it just so I know where it is so you guys can also find it. So woods high right there. And then just go ahead and find it right there, hollow. And you would think that this is brass, because I've kind of tried to make it sound like brass, but it's not brass. And here it is soloed. apartment um, okay so that's what's happening there obviously there's some automation again we have automation um, in the dynamics I believe that's what's happening here and I've made it so that the control simulated reverb amount here is set all the way to wet I just did that because it's the end of the piece and it's supposed to get crazy sometimes I like the simulated reverb that comes out of um, Spitfire's libraries although I think it's more having to do with contact than Spitfire um, I think they're using their tech but I'm not sure don't put me on that this is where it gets pretty indulgent the last piece uh, the second to last piece of the puzzle here is the harp and Celeste and I got this just because I was like you know what Jeff you should use <laughs> some of the libraries here uh, acquiring and this is uh, I've got it again with some uh, reverb we're in a different room this time just because that's safe I'm not going to try and pronounce that it's in Amsterdam and this is coming from the Bernard Herman uh, composer toolkit harp and Celeste I love the the arranged marriage I'm calling it of a lot of these uh, patches piccolo and flutes and flutes and clarinets so I decided to go for a very indulgent harp and Celeste or Celesta, um, and to me it just sounds really, it just sounds really good. Uh, here it is on its own, and in isolation it would sound absolutely insane, like you would never do this. But I find it complements the piece in a really nice way when it's tucked in there.
So again, really indulgent uh, and doesn't really add that much. But again, what I was saying before, if, if it's subtle enough, you miss it when it goes away. If it's too loud, you want to get rid of it. So this is subtle enough. So you heard it in isolation. I might as well just do a little without reverb so you can hear it. And that's not me using an arpeggio, that's just me doing the work and, and doing those um, those notes myself. And of course, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but I've got volume automation, I've got dynamics automation too. Um, so there's a lot kind of happening to keep these guys real and so that you're not conducting a orchestra of cadavers, as, they, as Christian Henson likes to say on his Spitfire channel. Um, so here's what it sounds like in the mix, and I'll take it away and bring it back in just so you can see what you're missing when it's gone. it when it goes away so that's what's going on there it's panned a little bit to the left keep it interesting the next is and the last thing are these tundra drones which i've got uh, altiverb 7 on as well it would seem and these are from the evo grid and they're just beautiful and they add so much character to the beginning of a composition to establish mood that's what they're doing they're establishing the mood it's kind of like a mini overture where you're telling people this is what it's going to, this is what you're in for. Um, the I'm just playing some random notes here. Which is how you could describe my composing career. And I've got low and high, so this one is doing some double octave stuff. It's doing high end stuff. This one's doing the low. I think. Unsoloed. Solo. That one's doing the low. This one's doing the high stuff. Almost like cicadas. Some people say cicadas. I think, I think it's pronounced cicadas in this, you know, in the heat of summer, you hear them in the trees. And this other one is panned to the left a little bit just to keep it interesting. And of course, with pads, oh my goodness, please. You have to automate them. You cannot have a pad just doing one thing for the entire. There's nothing more frustrating than listening to something that just doesn't change. Um, so please automate them. I've got um, dynamics automation here on the mod wheel. So we've got that happening on the lower one. And there's that happening on the upper one too. And I believe if there's some other volume automation. Yeah, I take, this, I take the volume of this way down on the Tundra drone just because it's so loud. Uh, if you don't do that. So maybe now that you've seen everything and I've shown you all of the moves that I made and everything that's happening here, let's just play it again now that you have the kind of context that might be interesting and we'll go out on that. So if you have any questions or comments, you want to know what I mean, you want to sort of dig in a little deeper to some of the things that I did or the techniques that I used or the automation, just leave a comment. We're going to go out on this. Um, thanks for watching. And yeah, take care. <laughs>